Ready when you are, Rand. <clears throat> well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Juan, my partner Andrew, and we're here to present our idea about clutch videos. So, basically, action cameras uh, sales have been increasing really a lot during the past decade. Everybody loves to have a GoPro on their helmet, in a pole, whatever they want to do, like take a hike, camp, ride their bikes. But what actually happens with all that raw footage that they have in their computers? Basically, it stays in their hard drive. No one has the time to go back and look at the footage and try to edit, try to take the best pictures, try to uh, get better angles or the lighting on the on the video, it's not that good. So basically, that's the problem that we want to attack. It also takes a lot of know-how and time to edit that video. Um, yesterday, actually, we were trying to edit a video, <laughs> us too, and it took us like two hours to try to make things and we couldn't even know. Like We had to go back to YouTube and try to look at videos on how to edit our video, basically. <laughs> uh, and what's, what's the problem? Like, everybody wants to brag about their activities. That's what social media is for. Like, everybody wants to post their videos, post cool pictures of their adventures during the weekend, and actually talk and to their, I don't know, colleagues, uh, friends about what they did and showed, and showed proof of what they did. So, we're here to present our business. Basically, our business is going to be, um, online platform where users can upload uh, raw footage to a website. Uh, they would submit a request with the raw footage and what they want. Like, I want, to be, I want a video to be three minutes, I want it to have these sections, I want it to be, I don't know, only the part that I'm sliding down the mountain. The mountain. And then, the editors, it, it would be a platform where we have a network of editors that would they would compete they would be they would create bids for designing that video. Basically, they would have a portfolio where users can see what they what they basically do, and after they like the editors see the requests of the of the customer, they would create a video, they would upload it, and the customer would pick the winner, and that would be the video editor that would take the money basically. So, so, the, so the video, the editors work before they're chosen? Yeah, it could be both. It could be both. It could be like, I could look at the, uh, the portfolio of the editor and I would say like, oh, I want something like this video that you have on your portfolio. Or they would submit the request and editors would start like uh, creating the videos and submitting it. And then the customer would pick one as a winner. Okay. What kind of security issues have you guys identified with people uploading their vacation photos to ensure that they don't just wind up broadly published across the internet? Um, because the, the editors would have to work online on this. They wouldn't have to. It, they're, they're not allowed to work it on, like, or download it to their hard drives or anything. So. Okay. So basically, our final product, we want something like this. As you see, it's a simple activity going to the park with your kids, having a great time, and 
having a great video to show grandma, grandpa about the about how the kids are learning to play baseball, and it's something that you can put up in your uh, social media and have and enjoy whenever you want. So, what have we learned about the customers? We we did 36. Uh, we had a survey with 36 people. Basically, what the customers want is videos no longer than three minutes. Like after three minutes, people start to get bored about watching a video or they want to change it or they start uh, going to more interesting parts of the video. Uh, they, want, they want it to be done in less than, than five days, basically. After five days, it's old news. No one wants to hear about the activity that you've been talking about for the entire week and after a week, the next week and you would have a new different activity so they don't want to they don't want it to be there um, we have some difference between people wanting to do some small edits before uploading the video or not some people are willing to spend at least uh, up to 10 minutes trying to make some cuts on the videos and putting some small edits so they can have like lower prices in terms of the final product uh, they all want a written explanation of describing what the product, what they, what the product they want, and basically we found that most of them are around uh, the price range of a hundred dollars for a video of three minutes. And one of the most important things is that they want full communications with the editors. They want to have like back and forth communication with the editors, saying uh, how the product. It's looking what they want how, uh, and how they want it to be. So, our current needs is that we we need a first round investment of uh, three hundred thousand uh, dollars. This is to cover the website prototyping, creating the website, um, optimization of the website, basically, commercial testing, marketing, and general business experience uh, expenses. Uh, here's the market opportunity that we have. These are the sales that are projected for action cameras. If you see, there was only 1.5 uh, million cameras sold during 2011, and it's projected to be 5.15 uh, cameras sold in 2016. So it's growing a lot. It's something that everybody wants to have. And people have more than one just for them because they want different angles on their experience. So it's continuing growing. One thing that is um, peculiar about this industry is that there's a correlation in between the action cameras and social media. Um, you can see that um, the more that um, uh, GoPro cameras or action cameras are sold, the more videos are posted on YouTube. So they go really hand to hand on how they work. It's the same thing with Facebook it, and uh, Instagram and Twitter. They go really hand to hand on how the market is growing and how social media is being used. So something really funny about this. Have you, uh, did you research where people would post their videos? Like are they looking for, or do people want any sort of variety in that? Like I want a 30 second Vine video and a three minute YouTube video or stuff like that. Did you talk? One of the most popular is the YouTube channel for GoPro. Okay. Like that's where people want to be like because there's contests that you can get like to be the video of the day or the video of the week and that's what people are aiming for. They, they, they're trying to do crazy things to try to become famous to be the video of the week or the video of the day. Because that video gets to be posted on GoPros, Facebook, GoPros, Instagram, everywhere. So people really want, even though you don't film the video with a GoPro, you just post it on the GoPro channel. Got it. Okay. it doesn't matter. But that's like the most, uh, the channel, it's one of the channels with the most views in YouTube. And so people really enjoy it. Uh. Because you are an editing service and if they are using these multiple angles, then for this 20, 30 minute slot, you might have like three or four different feeds you're going to be manipulating. So you're going to have a, a big data cost, you know, however you can lease it or however you decide to do that. Are you planning on sort of pushing that back on the customer so they can actually pay for continued storage of that content 
with your service, or is that something you don't even want to mess with? Of once you submit the final video, you know we'll delete it within two weeks, or I guess what are, what are you doing with those costs of like the actual like data? We're gonna have different options for the customer to send us the video. Uh, they can use. They're gonna be able to use Dropbox. They're gonna be able to use a platform inside the website, or we'll cover the cost of them shipping us like a CD or whatever or a hard drive to us. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be the same way around. Like we can give them hard, the same hard drive with a video. Uh, we're gonna have them email, or not email, but on Dropbox or in the platform. But yeah, the video is not gonna be there for, for a long time. They're gonna have between a week or two to download the video from there because we don't want that space to be in our platform. Yeah, we don't want to have them store, storing anything, but we were going to ask a few customers who had special video, who had really cool videos, if we could actually use it on our website as examples. Um, so that would be the only type of uh, storing. Okay. Um, so next we're going to look at the, the, the competitors. So when we were, when we were researching competitors, um, we wanted to find out how we can create a point of differentiation. Um, so the ones that you see up here are the biggest online services uh, and they really market to small businesses and, and, uh, and mid-sized businesses for making marketing and promotional videos. Um, they said they get a lot of, um, they get a lot of retreats, they get a lot of, uh, of their, um, their services that they want to combine and make like a cool montage and put it on their website um, or put it on their Facebook page so uh, the consumers can see what they, what the products that they have. They charge by the hour. Um, they have different limits for uploading uh, and the amount of footage that you can upload. Uh, they make one edit and they have limited communication with the customer. They have them fill out a request for services form. It's sent in. Uh, the company is basically given creative control to do what they want within um, those specific customer requests. Uh, once they're finished, generally the timeline is, is five to ten business days. They'll send it back to the uh, customer. Uh, if they have any uh, objections or they want to modify it again, it's an additional charge up front, um, and they'll and they'll try and explain their uh, their edits that they want to have done, send it back, and it's just this back and forth uh, time uh, taking process. Um, some of the oh, most of the edits that oh, so, wait question yeah are you gonna go with that same kind of template. No, we are, we are planning, the, the point of differentiation that we want to do is offer uh, different tiered packages. Um, we want to have constant communication with the editor. Uh, they get to choose the editor that they want from a pool of, you know, depending on, on how much their bid is or how much they're looking to pay, they'll have um, up to 100 different uh, requests sent to them for what the video is going to look like. So throughout the whole process, the, the customer will be able to see the edits that are happening. Right, right. How much per hour do these guys charge? So we got sixty dollars per hour was our most uh, was our average price, um, and it could go up depending on uh, how long they want the video to be, how many videos that are going to be edited, um, the type of edits that they're going to do, whether there's saturation coding <coughs> problem, transitioning, lighting, panning, zooming. Um, what was, was the cheapest per hour cost that you got quoted? Forty-five. Right. Okay. Uh, was, was the cheapest. And as far as the time that it would take, uh, if customers aren't providing um, the starting and stopping points for the video, they said that one hour of uh, to edit a one-hour video clip would take up to ten hours, um, just because you have to watch the video, find the best parts that are going to fit together, make sure the transitioning is there. If you have the customer do the edits for you ahead of time, it significantly reduces that. Um, we are quoted that an hour uh, video would take three hours of editing if, if they have the, the starting and stopping points ahead of time. So you can see where, you know, if I'm an individual or a small business looking to have uh, a marketing uh, video made for me, these the prices can can really skyrocket. But these are three minute videos, right? So thirty minutes. Is that, you know, uh, these are three minute videos. Right. Yeah. Ours are three minute videos. I mean, it, it's still so, going thirty minutes. Of editing, yeah. uh, it's probably going to be more than 30 minutes of editing. It depends on how much, how many videos that they upload themselves, and the duration of that, and how specific the customer can be on what parts he wants, um, and and the flow of the movie too. 
It also depends on the amount of footage that the user submits to. It's curious how you guys are going to train the editors or provide quality control for what they produce? So quality control is going to be, we're going to make it really specific up front what the customer is expecting and, and what we expect them to get. The quality control is basically, basically going to be the managerial team looking at the finished product and um, from our interpretation, whether it's, it's good quality or not. We do offer a money back guarantee if the consumer isn't happy, but we have final discretion to say, uh, this, you know, up front, we told you what you were gonna get, this fits the mold, and it should be satisfactory to your needs. Um, but that's, yeah, that's the, about the quality control that we can provide. Uh, we have talked about um, if it's gonna, you know, so the, the editors are gonna be chosen based on a rating system customer testimonies. Uh, so if they have a low, you know, low star rating, they're probably not going to get chosen. And we also have the option to, to cut them out from the network completely. So uh, there's definitely risk with the crowdsourcing model like that. Um, but we hope that the, uh, the customer review should, should mitigate that. Do you guys think you're going to have any trouble finding editors to join your service or sign on? Because it seems as though they're very active and in getting involved in your process. Uh, how many editors are out there who are looking for extra work or things like this? I mean, we think that, especially with the future generations coming up, there's going to be a surplus of, of people who are capable of editing, and that's the whole bidding uh, business model at that point. So if we put a price up there, we'll see how many people would like to edit at that price. Um, if it's not working, we can lower the base price and see how many how many uh, we get there. But it's it's a task that can be done in your home with your own project, your own software, and at your leisure, so. Um, is, there a, is there a proxy like elance.com video editors or something like that that you looked at? We haven't had video editors like Elance, but we had, um, so we got the idea from our wise advisors, uh, 99 Designs is a, is a sourcing for uh, logos, um, and they, they launch a contest very similar to what we're doing. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much the closest okay. approach. And how many designers are 99 designers? They have they have over 30,000 designers okay. in there. Different levels, obviously. Um, okay. And I think they, they have a stricter policy on um, who is, is, can be designers. They have them create an upfront uh, template and yeah. just to prove that they have the skill okay. and capability. So uh, our target market, uh, we're going we're gonna to first go after the young adult ages 20 to 40 uh, who are prone to sports. This is similar to the GoPro model, the, the same target demographic that GoPro goes after. Uh, we're going to go with young parents who have children um, because we think that parents will spend a lot of money on their kids that they wouldn't otherwise spend on themselves. And then also grandparents because we think that grandparents, this is a, a gift that they, would, they could have and they would financially pay for this. Um, so grandparents would say, we'll, we'll front the fee if you parents can get this video made of our grandkids you know, doing, uh, doing skiing activities or, or going to the beach for the first time to preserve these memories. So um, we're going to go after grandparents as well. Um, some of the specific uh, activities that we're going we're gonna to target to, um, graduations, weddings, birthday parties, uh, things like that, big group activities that are significant moments in people's lives that they would like to have preserved in more than just a hour long video. Uh, so here's our pricing model. We're going to have a different tiered package. Uh, it starts out at 99, which is going to be for your more uh, everyday user. Um, it's good for families, you get basic edits. Uh, you, you, there's going to be a limit on the amount of footage that you can upload. Um, there's going to be a limit on the type of edits that you can have. Uh, and you see we go up from there to our silver package, which is priced at $299, gold $599, and platinum $1,000. And we're trying to, with, the, with these tiered package, we're trying to identify each type of uh, target consumer um, up to $1,000 who we think that they're going to be the people who are spending a lot of money going on these, ex these extravagant vacations, you know, skiing in the Alps or surfing in South Africa and who have already invested so much in the vacation that they wouldn't mind investing in an additional five, 500 or $1,000, especially amongst a group of them, um, to divvy up that payment and make one of these videos for, them, for themselves. So we really want anyone from the everyday user to the, the professional, uh, professional user. Uh, so how are we gonna market? 
Um, so it's similar to GoPro, they get a lot of free marketing from the users because the users are the one generating the content and then sharing it themselves. And so we're going to uh, use a similar model where it's going to be um, the bi kind of the vir virality, virality, virality of, 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 a, of a video. Um, it's going to uh, a lot of you know a lot of powerful images, good music, uh, and, and let the consumer do a lot of the work for us. We will be hiring a marketing person. Um, so wrap wrap up your presentation if you can. Yeah, sure. So uh, so here are our financials. Um, we are looking to have uh, a net income based on in year five of uh, over five hundred thousand dollars, and this is a conservative estimate because this is um, taking this is thirty five thousand users. Uh, spread amongst, which is a fraction of the percentage that of, of Go, uh, people who actually purchase GoPros. Um, we have a valuation that we are looking to get acquired. That's the whole purpose. If, if we think that if we can build a network of loyal editors and customers who are going to be able to share better content from the videos that they're uh, that they're getting from from GoPro, it, it would only help these action action camera companies. Uh, so that would be our, our main acquirer, and we think that with a multiplier of eight, uh, we have a, a valuation estimated at over six million um, in year five. You need uh, what was your ask? Three hundred thousand. So you six so twenty x. Okay. Um, yeah. So then, then our our exit strategy. Um, there's potential acquirers: GoPro, Sony, Contour, YouTube. These video services. And uh, we think it's a good way for them to grow and, and market their brand. Cool. With that, any questions? All right, cool. Sure. Questions? Feedback? Um, in the feedback time here. So, what, 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 other questions? Are, are there any services that um, offer similar for photographs? Can I send someone a thousand photographs put together a photo book for me? There are. Um, we we we're not looking on what only to to do like videos. We're looking to do pictures too at the same time. And, we and so, what kind of um, you know? Turnaround time cost do they have for pictures? For photographs, I mean, so does that exist yet, or that's something you're thinking about doing? Well, it's it's actually a, a self service, so it's uh, it's an online website. You can go and you upload these, and, it, and you pick and choose a creative well, book. Right, it asks you how long you want the total video, how long do you want the intervals to be, do you want to add music? Click, click, click. Here's here's your video. Um, it's it's limited in the amount of things that you can do with it, but there are those are those services out there. So then I'll throw out a comment, and in my only comment, my first impression is um, photos are so personal. And if I send you a video, of that, an hour long video I've taken, um, you're not going to know what's important to me, I mean, unless I tell you. And maybe I don't know to, to point out that that's my grandma who just passed away in that photo kind of thing. And so you cut that out, so I'm pissed off now that I didn't get this in my video. So I'm, I'm really concerned that your business model um, is going to be difficult to, um, to scale because trying to get that personal note. Right. So the, the way that we would, we're trying to approach that is when you upload the video, it'll break it out by frames or at least a group of frames and you can, you can click on the ones that are important to you. Um, we are looking into facial recognition and so it identifies the, the individuals and say, you know, would you like to include uh, frames with this, this person or this face, this face, this face. So you can actually click in the <coughs> request for services form um, and identify the parts that you want them. So what technology do you have to build to make this all happen? Uh, I mean, there's fa facial recognition technology out there. It's just being able to get a, a software engineer to implement it into, our, into a website and user interface that's friendly yeah. to the average user. Um, we're still looking into that, yeah. exactly what it takes, though. Also, like, one of the main things is that we're going to have uh, both two ways <coughs> for the customer to tell us what they want. There's going to be like a space for them to write what's their story, what they want for, to be a, a final product, and which parts they want us to focus. And there's another part that it's going to be just a couple of questions that you can answer that it's going to tell us a little bit of what you have in mind. So basically, there's those two different options that you can fill and, and hopefully that combined with the constant communication in between the customer and the editor will help us get the final product that you want. Other feedback, Joe, yeah. So, so $99 for three minutes of video, how much video am I sending to get that three minutes? It's three hours worth of video. Three hours worth of video, 
to get three minutes. I mean, I mean, there's there's different options. It doesn't have to be three minutes. That was the average that we got the most. Okay. Asked but don't pay ninety nine dollars for that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what percentage of all your customers do you have the the um, basic pro platinum? How many of them are going to be the basic ninety nine dollar customers? The majority we had. Like ninety percent. It it wasn't ninety, but it was above seventy. It was like seventy five. Was our. Okay. So my my feedback would be I make that make sense to me. The cost structure of this makes zero sense to me. I don't see how it can, I just don't see how it can happen. It's a very, very low amount you're paying, you're getting per hour of actual work done, three hours of footage, down to three, I and mean, that sounds like a ton of work, and if there's back and forth communication, you know, I, I think it'd be cool if it existed, but I'm just, I'm not getting the cost structure at all. I mean, it, it, the comment would be, you lost me, because I'm just like, I, I don't see how this is feasible. That's the, that's the top, uh, size of the footage that you can upload. When we did I, our, I, when we did our This is more of a comment than a, you don't have to answer it. No, okay. It's more of the, you lost me because I'm just saying the cost structure doesn't make sense to me. And at that point, I sort of just stopped listening. I stopped believing it because it just doesn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't square the circle. But I, I, would come, I would counteract that by saying, well, there's probably, they're probably in India and China and other places, people that can do this that be happy with the rate. Right. Communication problems. Then you run into communication problems, yeah. But I mean, that's but the, that's the editor's problem, not their problem. The thing is, like when we when we did our survey and we when we did our uh, when we did our market research, most of the people end up with in between thirty to an hour minutes of uh, footage that they're going to have, and they want a product out of that. We're giving them the option to have third three hours into that th into the footage that they can submit to us. But most of the people that we interviewed, they don't have more than an hour in footage. They go in between 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour of footage that they will submit after an activity. This is more common. If you are going to move forward with this, then um, I would look into partnering with YouTube or somebody who already has a large base of people who are, are putting videos online and like offering a service and then a percentage of that instead of creating all this from the ground up when you don't even know a lot of the variables. But maybe a partnership would work out better. So, other comments? I think, um, I mean, if you did good market research, you to 35 different people who were out there who were talking to them. So, I mean, you gathered this general profile of who the people are and what they want. That's really good. I, there's just, it's sort of, you did, I think, the right thing in that you didn't try to figure out all the different technical things you would have to build to make this happen because I'm sure many of our technical resources in the room could tell you there'd probably be a hundred different things you'd have to worry about. Um, but at least you did identify there is a potential market here and looking at looking up those competitors, it doesn't look like they have a really great service going on just yet. So good good work. Any other comments and Questions, suggestions? I've got one thing to, to say. I mean, this isn't really about the presentation, but and I, and I, I hate to call you guys out in front of everybody, but I think you guys missed an opportunity here to leverage your mentors to make this better. Because we had to work with you to get the first meeting on the calendar, and I don't think I even saw a response to Jeff's email to set up the second meeting. And this is a guy that's founded like multiple software companies. So, I mean, that's something to think about. Yeah, and, and that's fair, that's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, but, it, you know, came together all right, um, but I do, I would agree with that, I mean, we, we like to engage with guys, so, um, other comments, questions, these guys, no? All right, nice work, guys. Whoa, the blazers with the jeans? The <laughs> way <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to
Oh, we did. Oh, you guys did. Really? I know. Eric, it's great to know. See, Eric forgot the memo about the wearing of the green polo. Yeah, I know. There's something around this show. Just wing it. Yeah, I know. Okay. Make sure I get that back. I know. That thing is expensive. This show is Actually, for this now, we're not using it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Some of us had way more than 10 weeks in our projects. Thank you. 
It's all my I'm just pressing buttons. It works. What did you say? Charlie what? Charlie likes being on camera. I heard that from somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right. Yeah. We're still running. So, yeah, go for it. All right. Perfect. Now, every morning, 16 million American children wake up suffering from malnutrition.